It's also true that there's a lot of untapped ability out there. Uh, you know, I'm from New York, and uh, we have one of America's most creative university prison partnerships in Bard College, and one of the Bard College prison debate teams beat Harvard and West Point for the last 16 months in debate. So it's we you want to keep the university system flowing, and when we uh, when we're not in the top 10 anymore, in the percentage of our people, you know, ages. 25 to 34 with four-year degrees, it bothers me, and I think COTS has a lot to do with it. And I agree that the state universities have not been adequately funded by the, we were at Berkeley, you know, for CGIU, and only 13% of their revenues come from the state anymore. And, and they can make a lot of money because of the same way you do, with all your scientific advances and everything. But uh, we have, Here's the leader of Miami Dade and Donna Chaleta with the president of the University of Miami. We've got all these different kinds of uh, examples. But we really need to, we need to quit fooling with this and resolve this debt issue and then give people a path to get out of college debt free. And in my opinion, so we can have more people like you. And it's really important. And for the already existing debt, another thing I think we should consider is that treating the big, big debt, not paid off by public service, like a home mortgage, let people pay for it over 20 years as a fixed percentage of their income. You can already do that with the government insured loans, but more, more people are borrowing outside the system, and it's absolutely crazy. Everybody in this audience, you're right, has at least a 50% chance to live to be 100 years old. And without the threat of Alzheimer's or other dementia because of biomedical advances. That means that your education, which it got you in this chair, is more of a lifetime asset than any home you will ever own. And I, I believe if what you've got to pay were limited, no matter how much you owe, to 10% of your after tax income per month, which is essentially what the federal loan does, it would make a big difference. And we, we've got to do this. We, you know, to go back to what you said, I agree that political gridlock's a problem, but the consequences of political gridlock are that we're 16th in the world in the percentage of our people with access to affordable broadband. And South Korea's first. That's pretty embarrassing since we started here. That we are not in the top 10 in the percentage of our young, younger Americans with four-year college degrees. And I could just go through example after example. We rank first or second in the world in the capacity to generate energy from the sun and the wind. How come it's Germany that generates 87% of its electricity from the sun and the wind on a good day? A lot of this stuff is, we do have a still an incredibly vibrant uh, university economy, university generated economy, and basically science and technology based. But we really need to think about this, and we need to think about how technology can bring economic opportunity to small towns and rural areas. Well, I think that therein lies a, a great opportunity, because in fact, with new approaches,